Over the past month, I've been using AI to help me make my upcoming game Hexagon, and the results are kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting to feel how I felt using it, and I, I, I guess I didn't even think I'd, I'd feel anything. I thought I'd more, I'd gain some productivity or some value. We'll get into that in a second, because first off, I want to admit that I am skeptical of AI in our society, and there are a lot of ethical concerns about how they're trained and where they come from. I wanted to kind of set those emotions aside because there's also a pragmatic approach about going about life and changes that are happening uh, all around us. And I wanted to dive into it and see if I used it extensively for a month, what would that be like? What would the value of that be in my game development? That you practice it and, and, and doesn't even have a place for it. And so I started off by purchasing the premium edition of ChatGPT. And when you do that, you get like, access to a couple like higher, higher tier models or newer trained models or just better models in general. And right off the bat, uh, talking with it, I, I, I spent quite a while uh, basically explaining what Hexagod was to this kind of higher tier model, which still gives you some limits for the mod. The, it's like 20 bucks, so it still had some limits for what uh, how many times I could speak to it. In, uh, in a while, so you'll see a lot of my comments to it are gonna be a bit longer, giving it a lot more context. And then I noticed right away that it was giving me much more thoughtful and reasonable and like detailed responses. It also felt like it had a better train of thought of keeping the context of this whole conversation of explaining Hexagod to it. Um, kind of in its brain, if you will. And I keep using thoughtfulness and, and brain and the reason because it really, this really did feel like I had a coworker next to me, but it would have been a coworker who couldn't see or actually play my game. And so I spent the first kind of big chunk of time with ChatGPT here, I spent teaching it Hexagod from a perspective of it not being able to see it. And that as a practice was really interesting. Specifically speaking, I constantly, I said, as we're going through this, ask me questions. Because games are very visual, it had a lot of really good questions and it had a lot of perspectives that I hadn't thought about. So the act of kind of teaching it my game in itself made me explain my game and parse it through in my head that gave me a really solid foundational understanding of where I was at. Now, I've been working on my upcoming game, Hexagod, here for... Uh, about nine months, six months at this point. It's been a while at this point. I've been working on Hexagon. These pictures are actually, does, doesn't really do it justice. Um, I've been working on this game for quite a while at this point. And so I, of course, have a really foundational understanding of the game and how it works and stuff. But simply putting it into text, because I can show you the game and you can see what I'm talking about if I say that now it's turn-based and you can click and drag them. But having to parse it into natural language is the same it's the same act as making a game design document, but with ChatGPT, kind of as my game design document, it asked me good questions that made me have to go back and forth and keep thinking about the best way to answer it or how to explain it. And so one of my first reactions was, it's still a tool that I had to learn how to use. I had to communicate to it effectively for it to give me effective answers. If I gave it a haphazard answer or a short answer, just like if you're talking to your best friend trying to plan out um, a, a plan on the weekend and you're being cagey or not communicating very well, you might not be on the same page for it. And that's the same thing with ChatGPT. If I don't communicate with it effectively, the results I get are also worse. So there's still some learning how to use the tool. It's, it's, it's I guess, to get the most out of it. I had to figure out how to communicate with it, basically not being able to be visual. Um, the second big takeaway I had um, was kind of, I was blown away by using a more recent model. And specifically speaking, after I got done teaching it, I said, hey, out of curiosity, what would you price a game like Hexagod at? I have an idea, but I'm curious to see what you wanted, to, well, what you think. And it gave back to me some comparable titles. Now, I haven't mentioned Stacklands or Townscaper or Dwarf Mantic or Slid the Spire, but it went out and found games that it thought were similar. I don't know if it's searching the internet or if these are just 
kind of last five years big titles, but it went through and it, it did an analysis looking at those price points and then comparing them to what Hex God is going to be and came up with some actually pretty decent options that it kind of opened my eyes to, oh, I could I could maybe put my my game into a different price tier. Because I was really thinking Stacklands, five buck tier, but it, it kind of it made some decent arguments for why I might think about going at the, the 9.99 tier and stuff like that. So this was a shocking moment where basically all the context I had, the, the time I had spent, the hours I had spent teaching at Hexagod paid off by asking it a simple question and having it come back with some really honestly shocking analysis that although I can read through it and disagree with some of the points and agree with it, it gave me a, a point and a perspective that my brain hadn't considered to do it. And as a solo developer, that's pretty valuable. Being able to have different perspectives of problems is one of the big reasons that feedback in game development is hammered again and again and again. Give your game to people, let them play it, watch them play it, get that feedback, consider it, you know, kind of think about it, but like use feedback as a mechanism for other perspectives, specifically speaking, the player perspective. And one of the things that I think is the most interesting about ChatGPT and using it like I did is it felt like I had a coworker in the room with me. Now, I was hoping I could get some like coding help with it. And there were instances where it could help me get up and going quickly, but very fast because it didn't know my project. The suggestions had to be manicured. And so if you get code from ChatGPT or something like that, there's always this, you have to spend about two to three hours manicuring it and adjusting it for it to just fit right into your project where you could have probably spent an hour or two doing it yourself and saved yourself some time. I definitely still felt that with the premium model, but what I did really enjoy is that coworker nature. There were many days where I would be trying to come up with the design of how a system would work. Um, this might be, uh, here we go, a rotating shop code. Um, so I started this off by basically like having some ideas of how to do some, some different pieces of the code. I, I knew what I wanted to do. And then working through it with it, it kept giving me different pieces of code. And I was really trying to push the limits. If I wasn't doing this as a monthly challenge, I would have probably given up and just said, Hey, I'm going to make it myself, but I wanted to try to keep pushing it. And so I asked it questions and I said, Hey, I, I want some approaches. And it started giving me some proposed structures. You can see it lists three, four, uh, four, five, f five different structures. And the coolest thing that that does is it gives your brain this interesting moment where you have to read through each structure and agree to it, or in most cases, disagree with the approach given your context of your project. But what that does is it gets you out of analysis paralysis mode because one of the hardest things as a creative person especially for me is having all of these potential avenues to go like game development you can take your game in any direction if you have a specific feature you can implement it in many different ways and oftentimes the best strategy is to just move in a direction trust your gut and move in a direction and then once you move in the direction as you get down that path you'll learn really quickly was that a good path was that a bad path? Should I have done something differently? And then you start to understand the shape of the problem. Because a lot of the times, analysis paralysis, for me, comes from a perspective of not really understanding the problem at hand. And so using ChatGPT to kind of suggest some approaches to some of the problems I wanna do. One, I have to explain the problem, which is helpful for my brain to really start to grasp what I'm talking about. But then two, it gives me a list of about five or six approaches, most of which frankly suck, but realizing and having to parse out that they suck is basically me taking some of those steps in those directions to realize that, oh, of the solution space, going in that direction is wrong, but I oftentimes get to the end of the list and say, one of those had a little bit of a spark in my head, and now I'm gonna move in that direction. 
And so it really felt like I was grabbing a whiteboard with a coworker. Well, I guess I can't really draw it for ChatGPT, but it felt like I was grabbing a coworker's ear, explaining the problem, having them bounce some ideas off of me, and then leaving those conversations with ChatGPT with a much sounder like idea of where I wanted to go, which is shocking. I oftentimes felt my momentum of the game development progress I was making on a given day was a lot higher than the days I didn't use chat GPT. Now my renewal has gone up. I'm not going to renew it for another month. Um, it was really helpful when I was trying to basically finalize the scope for my game. Hexagod's trying to come. I'm trying to release Hexagod into the February next fest and then get fully released into, um, likely full access in March. Um, so it was really helpful back in December when I was trying to nail down the final scope of the game and stuff like that. In the long run, if Aramis Studios had a budget for 20 bucks a month, I think it would be well worth it to have ChatGPT as a kind of a repository, almost a better note-taking app that can ask you questions about the notes you're trying to take and maybe even suggest approaches. I don't think the art is quite there for me to be really thrilled about it and i also don't think the coding suggestions are that great but if you're also a weak coder i do think that it could give you enough tools to be dangerous although the amount of spaghetti in your project will grow exponentially using chat gpt so i'd highly suggest that you use it as a tool to maybe get going or rapidly prototype but then also understand the code you're putting in your project so when inevitably bugs come up you have an idea of where to go um it's an interesting tool i'd suggest if you have an extra 20 bucks spend it Just take the ethics aside and all that stuff and 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 try out a tool uh, maybe a premium model of a tool and see if it can fit into your product i think there's a future where i do have a budget and i do have a chat gpt or some sort of an ai agent as an assistant or a coworker who i can bounce ideas off of and then ultimately hopefully make better games because I still have the final say of what goes into the game. And I think I still felt like throughout working with this thing, I had control. I had the soul of the game and it was merely a tool to reflect ideas off of and more or less rubber ducky in a really, really cool and fascinating way. And because of that, I'm kind of blown away by my month of using AI as a tool. Go check out uh, Hexagod. There'll be a new patch launched after this video goes live, and I'll be over on Twitch if you wanna come hang out and celebrate the week that was, talk about some goals for the new year. Um, but if you're out there and you're having a good day, that's all that matters. So I'll see you next time. I've been Aramis. Bye-bye.